400 years ago, a renowned French doctor decided to put in writing strange visions that he summoned up by occult means. He believed they foretold the future, and they have become known as the prophecies of Nostradamus. Many people have trusted them completely and even planned their lives around them. Adolf Hitler was one. The words of Nostradamus, although written four centuries earlier, seemed to describe Hitler uncannily. In the court of Henry II and Catherine de' Medici, Nostradamus was believed. Were they all deluded? Or was there some mystic formula which Nostradamus used to foresee events yet to happen? This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Early in the 16th century, Nostradamus gained fame as an astrologer after he published prophecies in verse form. Nostradamus described his method of predicting the future. Sitting alone at night in secret study, it is placed on the brass tripod. A slight flame comes out of the emptiness and makes successful that which should not be believed in vain. The wand in the hand is placed in the middle of the tripod's legs. With water, he sprinkles the hem of his garment and his foot. A voice, fear, he trembles in his robes. Divine splendor. The god sits nearby. Since the beginning of history, advice has been sought from prophets who foretold disasters yet to come. Mankind's belief in free will and control of our own destiny sits uneasily with a suspicion that catastrophes, natural and man-made, are in some way preordained. Nostradamus himself believed that his predictions were of fates that could be avoided, destinies that could be changed. He never doubted that he was genuinely seeing the future. He chose to write his prophecies in what are known as quatrains, four-lined rhyming verse in the Provençal dialect of southern France, which was his home. It was the time of the Inquisition, when men and women were burned for lesser heresies than the one he practiced. So he deliberately disguised and confused the quatrains, using anagrams, Latin and Greek. Specific dates are rare. Even so, his verses evoke vivid images of calamities on earth. At sunrise, a great fire will be seen, noise and light extending towards the north. Within the globe, death and cries are heard, death awaiting them through weapons, fire and famine. The greatest army on the march put to flight will scarcely be pursued further. The army reassembled and the legion reduced. They will be driven out of France completely. He organized his quatrains in groups of 100 called centuries. Nearly 1,000 predictions have come down to us. His fame spread with extraordinary speed after publication of the first volume in 1555. 
At the court of Henry II and Catherine de' Medici, they were read avidly. One was of particular interest because it was thought to predict the manner of the king's death. The young lion will overcome the older one in a field of combat in a single fight. He will pierce his eyes in their golden cage. Two wounds in one, then he dies a cruel death. An Italian prophet had already warned Henry II that both the beginning and end of his reign would be marked by a duel. The first duel had been fought without injury, and now it was thought that the king's jousting days were over. But the occasion of a double royal wedding of his sister and his daughter to foreign nobility proved too much of a temptation. <laughs> he faced his young lion, Count Gabriel de Montgomery. The young lion will overcome the older one in a field of combat in a single fight. The king wore a protective visor, according to contemporary accounts, made of gold. Was this, as Nostradamus called it, a golden cage? A field of combat in a single fight. towards each other. Montgomery, too late, tried to withdraw his lance. The lance splintered, fragments driving up under the protective gold visor. Henry II took 10 agonizing days to die from septicemia. It seemed such a striking confirmation of Nostradamus' prediction that Catherine de' Medici made him médecin du roi, a doctor and soothsayer by royal appointment. For the rest of his life, he was famed throughout Europe. And after his death in 1566, people began to interpret lines from his quatrains as referring to their own time. Erica Cheatham, a scholar of medieval French who has made a special study of Nostradamus, finds some of these supposed prophecies significant. One of the things I find most convincing about Nostradamus and personally made me really interested in following him through was the fact he gave specific dates that occurred after his death. He writes that in 1666 the city of London should be destroyed by fire. He gives the date of the death of King um, Charles I, 1649. The Parliament should put the King of London to death. Louis Pasteur, the great biologist, he not only gives his name but in the same verse he gives the founding of the Institute 1895 London burnt by fire in three times twenty plus six. The Great Fire of London happened in 1666. The French Revolution in 1791. By night, he will come through the forest, two partners, in a roundabout way. The queen, the white stone. The monk king, dressed in grey at Varennes. Marie Antoinette, her hair turned white through shock, escaped with Louis XVI secretly through the town of Varennes. For not wanting to consent to the divorce, which then will be recognized as unworthy, the king of the islands will be forced to flee and one put in his place who has no sign of kingship. King Edward VII of Britain abdicated because of his love of Mrs. Simpson and spent the rest of his life in exile. His brother George, who never expected nor wanted to become king, ruled in his place. But for those who see Nostradamus as having an outstanding prophetic gift, two names are always put forward. 
Napoleon. Hitler. Both names, if they were truly foreseen by Nostradamus, were disguised or coded. Napoleon was written as an anagram. Pau, Ne, Laurent. Juggle these around and they become Napoleon Roy, Napoleon the King. Napoleon, after his defeat at Waterloo, was exiled on the tiny island of Elba. After his escape and his victorious 100 days, a new empire began to grow for him. Stained with murder and enormous adulteries, the great enemy of all mankind, he will be worse than his ancestors, uncles and fathers, in steel, fire and water, bloody and inhuman. Out of nearly 1,000 such quatrains that Nostradamus wrote, how many can be interpreted as having come true? Scholars such as Erica Cheatham think the proportion is very high. In my opinion, I think perhaps 73% is a rough average of what has come true, but remember that does cover a span of 400 years. As Hitler advanced through Europe, his colleague Goebbels was busy orchestrating a propaganda campaign based on the 400-year-old prophecies. True or not, they were to have an effect on the strategy of the Second World War. It was Frau Goebbels, wife of the Nazi propaganda minister, who first alerted Hitler to the strangely accurate way that Nostradamus seemed to describe events leading to the war in Europe. Alec Howe, a former British intelligence agent, detailed to assess the influence of Nostradamus on Hitler, explains what happened. Around the 20th of November, 1940, once Goebbels was actually sleeping at home with his wife. She was reading a book about ancient prophecies, and she was so excited about what she uh, read about a, a um, particular prophecy which had been attributed to Nostradamus, that she woke her husband up and said, Joseph, 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 you must listen to this. There's this prophecy that there'd be a war in Poland in 1939 and it would be the end of the British Empire. And a couple of days later, Goebbels was instructing his stooges at the propaganda ministry to, to prepare, without delay, a Nostradamus leaflet uh, for the benefit of the French in order to depress and mislead them. No fewer than 13 quatrains seem to refer to Hitler, sometimes calling him Hister, sometimes the great or greatest leader, and describing the swastika as the crooked cross. Even before hostilities began, military leaders on the French side began to dig the Maginot Line according to instructions apparently given by Nostradamus. A great trench, earth excavated. The water will be divided into 15 parts. The Nuremberg Rally and the invasion and occupation of France. When the greatest man carried off the prize of Nuremberg, battle is joined with the French. He makes preparations. Some will regard him as good, others bad or uncertain. Italy and the pact with Mussolini. Not far from Venice, the two greatest ones of Asia and Africa will be said to come from the Rhine and Hitler. Mussolini's black-clothed fascists and the pact with Hitler. Liberty will be occupied by a black, proud and villainous man. By Hitler, the Republic of Venice will be vexed. Aerial warfare and the Battle of Britain. He will use thunderbolts. So many in such an array. 
the machine of flying fire will come. A skeptic would call these quatrains obscure and irrelevant. And was Nostradamus genuinely foreseeing a swastika when he wrote the following? The great pontiff by the warlike party who will subjugate the borders of the Danube. The cross pursued by hook or crook. Captives, gold, jewels, more than 100,000 rubies. And are even the references by name to Napoleon and Hitler as accurate as they first appear? Author John Sladek Napoleon. does not think so. There are hundreds of Napoleon quatrains in the prophecies, mainly because I think the 19th century French scholars kept going over and over Nostradamus and digging out anything that could be anything to do with Napoleon. But the one I, I noticed particularly is supposed to have an anagram of Napoleon, which is P-A-U. N-A-Y-L-O-R-O-N. If anybody can make Napoleon out of this, they're a pretty good mystic themselves. In fact, it could be an anagram of just about anything. It could be an anagram of your pal Anon. There are a number of predictions which refer to uh, something or someone called Hister, H-I-S-T-E-R. And this is usually taken by the Nostradamus uh, believers as Hitler. But in fact, it was a reference to the Danube River, which was called the Easter River in uh, Nostradamus's time. It is said in defense of Nostradamus that he made his prophecies deliberately obscure in order to escape the charges of heresy and witchcraft. Moreover, if it is possible to look into the future, everyone in history who has attempted to do so has said that the picture is uncertain and indistinct as if they are permitted only glimpses of what might be. It's self-fulfilling prophecy. Ron Warmoth, modern psychic, often it's consulted by the business community, explains foretelling the future. And, uh, the true psychic part, or precognitive part, which is being able to sort of see around the bend in the river, as uh, Einstein put it, is uh, relatively rare in that sense where it's completely without any sort of an input I do believe that, uh, that we can prevent uh, future events. I'm not a fatalist. I happen to believe that we do have free, you know, have free choice. And uh, I feel that uh, being forewarned is being forearmed, which means that if a psychic tells you something that's uh, negative, you can change it. If the Nostradamus predictions come true in our lifetime, might they help to establish his authenticity? They speak of actions begun by a man in France leading to a crisis in Persia, the land now called Iran. It was indeed in France that the Ayatollah Khomeini lived in exile before returning to take over from the Shah. Erika Cheatham finds this completely convincing. When I wrote it initially, I said that this particular prediction was rubbish. It's number 70 uh, in century one. It talks of a man in a turban who shall sit in France plotting the downfall of the emperor of Persia. Unbelievable. Another quatrain can be taken to predict that the Prince of England will marry and that he will be the last prince on the English throne. Lastly, he seems, according to Erica Cheatham, to speak of the San Andreas Fault. A great earthquake. He gives an astrological date, the sun in 20 degrees of Taurus, which means May the 10th. He does not give the year. The overthrow of Ayatollah Khomeini the last king of England. The eruption of the San Andreas earthquake on May the 10th. If all these happened, would it be just coincidence?
One striking aspect of the prophecies of Nostradamus is that where they seem to mean something, they have often been unfulfilled. Hitler saw himself as the conqueror of Europe and Russia. Neither Nostradamus nor any of his astrologers foresaw his downfall. Napoleon believed he would win at Waterloo, as predicted by Nostradamus. He lost. The certain quatrains which were taken to mean the French Revolution and then were taken to mean the Napoleonic Wars and then were taken to mean the First World War and then were taken to mean the Second World War. So I don't suppose uh, anything that's that, that vague really is of any value at all as far as predictive power. So far a lot of the things he said have come true or there has been uh accuracy there because I believe he did predict the Second World War. He's predicted also to do with the uh, massacre of the Jewish race. He also predicted a great deal to do with Hitler. He also predicted a lot of our problems we have with Russia. I mean different things and he has been very accurate. I mean I think the it has to speak for itself. In the end perhaps most prophecies mean just what the listener intends them to mean. Possibly those rare true glimpses of the future that some people seem to have are half coincidence and half foresight. Perhaps they owe as much to self-fulfillment as to the supernatural. We cannot be sure. <laughs>